From the Oklahoma Newsroom, it is time for the Red Zone, our weekly look at OU basketball. Extended look, that is. And guys, we've got a lot to talk about because it's NCAA tournament time. I'm Jenny Carlson here in studio with fellow columnist Barry Trammell, OU beat writer Joe Masato. The Sooners get started in NCAA tournament play Friday morning, about 1140 Oklahoma time. Joe, it's a matchup with Ole Miss, an 8-9 game that, you know, these are generally toss-up games, but... What do we know about the matchup as it relates to style? What the Sooners are going to see out of the Rebels on Friday? Yeah, when OU's been watching film and lead up to this matchup, they're really focusing on the guard play of Ole Miss. You've got Brian Tyree averaging 18 points per game, Terrence Davis averaging 15 points per game. Both of them shoot um, between 36 and 38 percent from three. So it's an Ole Miss club that isn't super big inside, isn't going to scare the Sooners. Um, with, with some monstrous center, but they can really shoot the ball, and it's going to be really key because you have a, a freshman point guard in Jamal Bienemy and a couple graduate transfers going up against some Ole Miss um, veterans as well. So uh, it's, it's going to be a really fun game to watch on the perimeter. Barry, when, when it looks like Ole Miss has a lot of guards, uh, that they really, that's the, the style that they play towards uh, Kermit Davis, his group there. OU, I mean, they are also pretty guard dominant, especially with Jemani McNeese being very up in the air right now. Yeah, it's a little bit of a strange matchup in that, you know, you, you, Sooners without McNeese are a fairly small team. So when you play in a team that's not very big, you think, okay, this is good. Except OU's not all that great at guard. Um, you know, the, when you look at uh, uh, Jamal B. Enemies, had his moments as a freshman point guard, but at times he struggled. Aaron Calixte, the uh, graduate transfer from Maine turns out pretty good shooter, pretty good scorer, but not a great ball handler. So I worry about the about the guard matchup in that uh, in, in, in an Ole Miss Oklahoma game. Uh, the Sooners are going to have to win this with their middle guys, with Christian Doolittle and Christian James and uh, Brady Manick. Uh, that's where the Sooners are going to have to win this. The gu- Sooners are not going to win this guard matchup. It doesn't sound like. Well, Joe, that's an interesting point because, you know, uh, Christian James being uh, a guy that uh, you're actually going to be looking into a little bit heading into this matchup, he's a guy that was really on fire against non-conference teams. And if Oklahoma's going to fare well against Ole Miss, it sounds like he's maybe going to need to rediscover that magic from non-conference play. Yeah, he, he's definitely got to step up, and he might be the X factor for this OU team because, you know, the, the season is basically sliced in half, non-conference to conference. Christian James playing at, a, at an elite level and then not so elite uh, once the calendar turned to Big 12 play. He's got to shoot the ball a little bit better. They've got to improve on their spacing. Um, part of what kind of Barry alluded to there is they're so focused through uh, playing through Christian Doolittle, whether it's in the high post or in the paint, maybe kick out to Brady Manick. The spacing's not always there to shoot the ball, kind of like it is for Ole Miss. If they can create some of that for Christian James, I think it's going to be huge for this OU team. Uh, they've just got to get him going. And, you know, one thing that might be on his side, at least mentally, is last non-conference game against a Vanderbilt squad, SEC school, not as good as Ole Miss, but he shot the ball really well, played really good against other non-conference teams. So maybe the tournament's sort of the perfect venue for him. Well, Barry, Christian James getting going, I mean, you need good players to play well to win games in the NCAA tournament. What would you want to see if you're Lon Kruger out of Christian James, uh, maybe even in the early going? I mean, what, what do you want to see out of Christian James in this game? I wouldn't mind seeing some aggression. At times, he seems a little lost, like he's just sort of blending in and for a fourth year senior a guy that's not just played in big games has had a huge impact people forget he had 10 points in an elite eight victory that sent OU to the final four as a true freshman so this is a guy that knows the big stage he ought to be able he ought to be comfortable taking the court in Columbia South Carolina more than anybody in the in the arena he's going to be uh, ha- have the experience to get to get going in that game so I'd like to see him be aggressive uh, there are times when he is, but there's times when he's not. And I think it's time Christian James to sort of grab this, uh, grab this tournament by the throat. All right, Barry. Joe mentioned X Factor. He thinks that Christian James could be the difference for the Sooners. Do you have a different guy in mind when you think about who might be the player most, uh, you know, in the crosshairs, if you will, for the Sooners? Yeah, I mentioned the, the matchup, you know, is a little strange for Oklahoma. In one way, it really helps the Sooners is – Brady Manick, I think, can stay on the court more than usual. Brady's an excellent shooter. He's a, he can score in bunches for Oklahoma. There are times when he's got to get off the court for defensive purposes. Ole Miss, it doesn't sound like, has the kind of team that can exploit 
Brady Manic too much. If Brady Manic can play 32, 33 minutes, get up about 10 three-pointers, knock down four or five, what a huge boost for that Oklahoma offense. I think Brady Manic could be in the crosshairs. A good game out of him could propel Oklahoma to victory. Yeah, a guy that has had his ups and downs this year for, for certain. Uh, Joe, the idea that Oklahoma might uh, be at its best with those guys sort of in the middle, you know, a guy like Christian Doolittle gets mentioned. You wrote about him before Big 12 tournament play. Obviously, Sooners didn't last long, but he's been a guy that almost quietly, I hate to say that, but almost quietly has emerged as the main key guy for this team. NCAA tournament experience, he's got some, but what do you expect to see out of Doolittle in this first round matchup? Yeah, I mean, he, he, he is sort of the quiet leader of this Oklahoma team, and he does so many things for them because uh, lately he's been their leading scorer. He's been their best defender. He's been a good facilitator. Yet I still don't think, you know, we see this team all the time, so we know that, but from an outside perspective, um, I, I've seen a couple lists, you know, previewing the tournament team by team. They pick out a best player for each team. Christian James is still usually that guy that, you know, people mention at least when they just look at the stats. But in reality, Christian Doolittle is Oklahoma's best player, and he, he's he's got to be that guy, and he just has a quiet confidence about him. He's not He's not sort of the raw, raw guy. I don't think there's too many of the, those guys on this team. Maybe Miles Reynolds is one of them. But Doolittle um, is sort of that quiet leader who is is really invested in, in, in the game and in winning and, you know, is so hard on himself. So I think it's going to be a, a really interesting tournament to see how uh, kind of a changing of the guard with him being that future leader. Yeah, and Christian Doolittle, Barry, to me, is the Sooners' best player, as, as Joe talked about. But... Do they know it? Are they going to be able to use him in a way against Ole Miss that could possibly propel them to a second-round game? Well, I, I certainly hope so. If we know it, it's a chance Long Kruger knows it. He seems to. <laughs> He's fairly smart. He, he, he seems to be a, a little bit on his way to knowing basketball. So I th I'm, I'm thinking it could be a big game for Christian Doolittle. The great thing about Doolittle is this. He's Mr. Consistent. He's good every game. Now, sometimes he doesn't get as many shots, but he's, this is not a guy that drops off a three for 12 game. He's somebody you can rely on. He's become the most dependable player on the squad. And, uh, and this is a matchup that sort of befits him. The one thing that can sort of sometimes get Doolittle is if there's a 6'10 guy standing there with his arms up, a little harder for those 10 footers to fall. Shouldn't be as much of a problem. Maybe a big game out of Doolittle uh, is in the offing. All right, so I mentioned second round matchups, which if you are Long Kruger and you know something about basketball, you're not talking at all about yeah. second round matchups with this team because obviously winning your first round game is paramount. But Joe, let's look a little bit at, at this South bracket that Oklahoma finds itself in. How does it set up for the Sooners if they survive Ole Miss on Friday? Yeah, I definitely don't want to look too far ahead, but <laughs> that matchup that might uh, await them uh, on Sunday is against Virginia, probably, unless 16 seed Gardner Webb pulls a UMBC. Oh my. <laughs> um, so, Virginia, though, looking ahead to that matchup, if OU does win, um, you're looking at a team that I think is going to remind Oklahoma a lot of Texas Tech, or, you know, maybe not personnel wise, but just the style that they play. Super defensive minded team. Virginia and Texas Tech are arguably the top two defensive teams in the country. Um, but at times, their offense can go. Um, and and that, that might give Oklahoma a little bit of an edge or, or Ole Miss a little bit of, of an edge, especially with their shooting. Um, but it, you know, overall the South region, when you look at the region just below that in the Midwest, not near as tough as that. Yeah, it definitely doesn't have sort of the name recognition that that Midwest bracket does. Barry, what about the South stands out to you? Well, Virginia is the elephant in the room for this reason. Number one seed last year, historically lost. Losing to Maryland, Baltimore County, first time a 16 had taken down a one. We had all we had long talked about it, uh, theorized whether it could happen. Well, it did happen, and it happened to Virginia. Does that make Virginia more fortified for this tournament? Do they go into this tournament think you know more focused, um, or do they go in a little bit gun shy because uh, they know what can happen? <coughs> I don't think Lightning's going to strike twice. I don't think Gardner Webb's going to beat Virginia. But what does it do for Virginia down the road? So, uh, you know, to me, Virginia is the story of, of the South Regional. And, um, you know, it's not a great matchup for Oklahoma. It's not a great matchup for anybody. There's yeah. nobody standing in line to play Virginia. Yeah. So uh, the good news is, you know, St. Joe talked about um, Texas Tech as a reasonable facsimile. The Sooners actually played halfway decent in two games against Tech. Was in the game at Lubbock down to the last minute. So 
uh, you know, Kansas State, another bulldog defensive team, uh, Sooners didn't fare quite as well. So chances are you're not going to fare well against that Virginia defense. But it, uh, you know, it, it's, an, it's an intriguing matchup either way. Guys, uh, before we get out of here, uh, obviously we're looking ahead, uh, which we don't really want to look too far ahead. So let's talk about who wins this OU Ole Miss game. Uh, I know we don't usually make predictions uh, for basketball games, but Joe, what's your best guess on what happens on Friday? Yeah, I, I sort of flip-flopped on this. I, initially, I had Ole Miss looking more at the matchup and, and what we talked about with maybe Christian Doolittle and Brady Manick exploiting that maybe. Um, I think OU's got a decent shot just because they guard so well on the perimeter. So. Um, it's it's such a it toss, a toss up, up, but I but, but I I'll pick OU in a close one. Barry, I mean Oklahoma's had rough goes of it here recently. They haven't, except for that Final Four run, they haven't really shown much in the NCAA tournament. Do you have them winning a game this time? Well, I picked Oklahoma, and I did this after intensive research. <laughs> um, we were asked to fill out, basically produce our <laughs> bracket, some six minutes after it was came, after the bracket came out, courtesy of our deputy sports editor, Jeff Patterson, who is from Kentucky, and apparently they do these kinds of things in the bluegrass. Uh, so I went with the Sooners after uh, spending about a millisecond on it. Um, I, you know, these eight, nine games, they could go either way. You know, it's just they're, they're the ultimate toss-ups. They're the ultimate toss-ups. Um, you're right, Jacko. Sooners have not the, do not have a stellar NCAA tournament record under Lon Kruger. This is Lon's sixth NCAA tournament with Oklahoma. He's only won games in two of the previous five, and three times they've gone one and done. So when Buddy Hill's been there filling it up, Sooners have advanced. When he's not, they haven't. So um, you know it'd be a good time for Oklahoma. To, uh, to start a new NCAA tradition of winning these first round games. All right, guys, it's an 1140 start Oklahoma time on Friday, True TV. Be sure you've got that uh, figured out on your, on your radio dial out there, folks. But you do get to hear the play-by-play -play from Jim Nance. Bill Rafferty, they've got they've got their top crew there. Love so Bill Rafferty. It, it'll be a great call, but you gotta find it on True TV again, eleven forty on Friday for the Sooners and the Rebels. Be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.